So what would actually happen if you completely gave up sugar for two weeks? Let's dive right in. The first thing you would notice is the shape of your face would change. It would go from being more roundish or puffy to a thinner face, like even with my face. You can see this before and after. My face actually was roundish and now it's not. So you'll see it in your face and you'll definitely see it in your midsection. So the reason why you lose fat in the midsection is because your liver is releasing fat. When you cut out sugar, the body is now forced to live off fat fuel because sugar and fat fuel are the only two fuel sources in the body. And given the choice, the body always will burn sugar over fat. When you cut that sugar out, you're left only with the fat fuel forcing your body to use up the fat reserves, starting with your liver. All right, the second thing that's going to happen, there's four main organs that are going to be affected when you cut out sugar, more than other organs, okay? Your eyes are definitely going to improve. You'll have less blurriness. You'll see better. You see, the eyes are very sensitive to sugar. This is why diabetics develop a condition called diabetic retinopathy, okay? Destruction of the retina. That's the main nerve in the back of the eye. So your eyes will improve. The kidneys will improve. The kidney is another organ that gets hammered with too much sugar. This is why you might end up with sugar in the urine or protein in the urine because the sugar is creating a lot of inflammation and kind of rusting out the pipes, like your blood vessels that go right through the kidney to be filtered. And this is what is called diabetic nephropathy. Neph meaning nephron, which is the little filtering things in your kidney. So basically you'll have better kidney function. And then we have your arteries. If there's too much sugar, they call it diabetic artery disease or vascular disease. And so when you cut the sugar out, the inflammation in your arteries, all that rusting effect by that excess glucose will kind of start healing again. And because sugar not only converts to fat, but cholesterol too, you'll see your cholesterol values improve dramatically. Then we get to the nerves and the brain. When you decrease sugar out of your diet, your nerves start healing up. If you have a diabetic condition called peripheral neuropathy, where the ends of your nerves and the bottom of your feet are being destroyed, that will start going away. But also, since there's a lot of nerves in your brain, your brain starts healing. And there's two main things in the brain that will improve. First, cognitive function. So your memory is better, your focus is better, and your concentration is much better. You're going to find that your mood is just completely changed. You're going to be much happier mind-blowing to me, and I'm trying to understand this, like diabetes, for example, right? What is diabetes? That is a disease of too much sugar in your blood, right? The obvious approach would be to eat less sugar if you're a diabetic, right? I mean, if diabetes is too much sugar in the blood, why not decrease the sugar in your blood? But maybe I'm missing something because if you look this up medically, you look at what causes diabetes, they're going to say two things, lifestyle and genetics, okay? And with lifestyle, they say it uh, could be obesity, it could be a lack of exercise, or, and this is a good one, urbanization, okay? I guess moving to the city will increase your risk of becoming a diabetic, but they're not mentioning too much dietary sugar. It's just wild to me. Instead, they say it's eating too much saturated fat. But that data has been completely debunked. And I will put a video, a couple things down below you can check out. If you still have even a hint of thought that it's the saturated fat, it's not, it's the carbs. And then when you dig a little bit further regarding the poor diet, they actually tell you to maintain high levels of grains in your diet. Now they will say whole grains, but even whole grains are like 85% carbohydrates. Maybe you can help me out. I don't, I don't know if it's just obvious to me or why other people are not getting this, but it's just so simple. You cut the sugar out if you have diabetes. All right, the next thing you're going to notice is you're going to get up a lot less during the night to pee, okay? Why is that? Because water follows sugar, okay? So if you're eating sugar and it's going through your blood and it's getting filtered to the kidney, you're going to find that that's going to trigger more urination, especially at night. And one simple solution is just to start cutting out the sugar and you will find you're going to get up a lot less during the night. I mean, when I was in practice, I've had people get up 10 times a night to pee. And all we did is cut the sugar out and they slept through the entire night. Now it does take a few weeks, but to salvage your sleep is so important.
right, the next thing that's going to improve is your energy. Well, like I said before, there's two types of fuel you can run your body on, sugar and fat. When you give up the sugar, your body is forced to burn your fat. Well, guess what? Your body has a lot more calories from fat than sugar. And I'm talking about stored sugar and stored fat. On average, even a thin person is carrying around about 100,000 calories of fat compared to like 1,700 calories of stored sugar. So if we were to give you an analogy, it would be like having this huge car battery to run on versus this little AAA battery. If you're going to run your entire body on this little AAA battery, you're going to be constantly hungry, craving, ups and down with your energy. But when you're burning fat, you no longer are susceptible to the ups and downs of this sugar, and especially the ups and downs of this energy fatigue cycle. I mean, think about this. Between the meals, right? Your body should live on fat. An average person with the standard American diet cannot even tap into the fat because there's just too much sugar in the bloodstream. So by dropping the sugar, converting your body over to fat fuel, you are going to be running on fat constantly between eating as well as your fat when you eat. And so that's going to give you a tremendous amount of steady state energy through the whole day. And your brain's going to feel a lot better. And this relates to the next point, cravings. The reason why your appetite goes away between meals is because even though you're not eating anything, okay, your body is eating its own fat between the meals. So if it's eating between the meals, it's being satisfied and you're not going to be hungry. And the only way to achieve that is by cutting down your sugar as well as not eating so frequently like all those snacks. So how do you get rid of the cravings for sugar? By not eating sugar. This process takes about three days and it's not that hard. Anyone can do this. You just have to bite the bullet and jump right in. But you want to reduce your carbs less than 50 grams per day. And that includes the fruits. It includes honey and a lot of the other hidden sugars as other carbs like the bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, waffles, things like that. I mean, an average person, at least in the US, consumes on average about 13.5 teaspoons of added sugar every single day. That comes out to 54 grams of sugar for those of you in Europe. Now, that's added sugar. What about the sugar in the other carbs, like the bread, pasta, cereal, crackers, biscuits, waffles, pancakes, muffins, alcoholic beverages, like wine and beer and the sodas and the juices, et cetera. That comes out to about a half a pound of actual sugar every single day. That's 275 grams of sugar. That's 68.75 teaspoons of sugar. So this added sugar thing is just the tip of the iceberg. It's all these other carbs that turn into sugar that are, is making a huge problem for your body. So this is why when you make this change and you start switching the fat burning, you start feeling so good. I mean, just the improvements in your mood and cognitive improvements is just going to be amazing. You're just going to feel really good. Not to mention, look a lot better with your clothes fitting better, your face not so round and not craving sugar. That's going to be huge. Now, when you cut out sugar, your inflammation, pain, and stiffness is going to also improve. Your arteries are going to be less stiff, which means your blood pressure is going to come down tremendously. So the need for medication becomes a lot less. And since anti-inflammatory medications are so popular nowadays, you'll be able to hopefully come off that medication as well because your inflammation is going to come down. And I'm talking about inflammation in the inside of your tissues, inside the arteries, inside your eyes, inside your kidneys, inside the nervous system, like the stuff that you can't really see, that will improve. You see, the inflammation deep inside the arteries are actually making the artery walls thicker, okay? The thicker the walls, the less space you have for blood to travel, and the more susceptible you are to getting things like clogged arteries. So what you're doing when you're giving up sugar is you're allowing more blood flow to get to the tissues. All right, so number seven, 
And uh, this is the obvious one, you're going to lose more weight, but not actually just weight, actual fat, which would be a really new concept for many people. Now you will lose a lot of water weight initially, because like I said before, wherever there's glucose, and I'm talking about stored glucose as glycogen, you're going to also store three times the amount of water. So stored sugar is basically a fluid filled sponge, and you'll lose at least 13 pounds in the first one to two weeks just by cutting out the sugar. And that's important, but the bigger thing is you actually get to tap into your actual fat and start losing weight. And think about all the other benefits of just losing weight and being able to do something that's effective. If you try to do a diet with too many carbs, boy, you're just going uphill, not to mention trying to lose weight with all the cravings and the hunger. It's going to be torture and impossible to do it any period of time. I mean, I think for some people, they may not know this, but carbs convert to fat and cholesterol, okay? Most of the fat in your liver has came from carbohydrates. And I'm not talking about salad carbohydrates. I'm talking about the grains, the breads, the pasta, the starch, the potatoes, et cetera. All right, the next benefit is your skin. Your acne is going to improve. Your dermatitis, like the red rashes on the skin, will improve because we're basically dropping inflammation everywhere, including on your skin. In fact, that's one of the things that changes the shape of your face because there's less inflammation and puffiness around your eyes, around your cheeks. And many people are not connecting the dots that that puffy face is excessive carbohydrates. And the last benefit, and I really want to explain this, okay? And I save this for the last. You are going to improve something at the heart of most health problems that people have. And that is insulin resistance. Let me explain what insulin resistance is. First of all, you have to realize that insulin is a hormone triggered by sugar, okay, and carbs. And so they both kind of go hand in hand. When you increase insulin, it's because of the carbohydrates. So when your body develops a resistance to anything, it's rejecting that thing, okay? Now you can also have glucose intolerance, which is a form of resistance, right? So this is all about um, receptors in your body okay, when you're receiving certain things. So when you consume a lot of sugar over time, your body is resisting that and the sugar does not connect anymore because the body is putting up a barrier. It's becoming very intolerant. Same thing with insulin, right? If there's too much insulin, that's very, very toxic and dangerous in the body. So your body develops a resistance against it. Now to solve this problem, our body just basically makes more insulin to penetrate this resistance, this barrier. So we have a situation where we have a lot of insulin being produced in the body, thus all the extra side effects that I just mentioned, because a lot of those are not just high glucose, they're high insulin as well, but also at the cell level, we have this deficiency of insulin situation, which also creates other problems. But eventually what happens is the pancreas that's pumping out all this insulin gets so tired, it can't compensate for this barrier or this resistance. So then it gets tired and it stops producing as much insulin. And this is when you get pre-diabetes and diabetes no longer compensating for the situation. And so we don't have enough insulin to push the blood sugar down. So when you have insulin resistance, you basically have a slow metabolism situation. You're going to have this set point, this certain weight that you just cannot get past. Let's say it's 160 pounds. You can diet, you can exercise, your body will not let you get below that certain weight. And this insulin is needed for other things like the absorption of potassium, the absorption of magnesium, the absorption of vitamin B1, the absorption of calcium, and many other nutrients, like even vitamin D. So by cutting out sugar, you improve insulin resistance, and you increase your absorption of all these nutrients, including amino acids, to build proteins. So if you had atrophy before that looks like cellulite on the, your legs or your butt, all of a sudden that starts improving. You get more muscle and you get a better body shape. Getting rid of this insulin resistance problem helps fatty liver. It helps decrease your risk for heart disease, a stroke, and even cancer. 
So before you add more time to think about if you should do this, I think you should start immediately. And I put up this very helpful video to show you exactly where to start. Check it out. It's right here.